2054, the jobs we knew have disappeared. We dedicate 1% of our life to work. Today, it has different names that at the dawn of the century, we did not even imagine. Man has gone through many eras. That of hunter-gatherers lasted a few million years. That of agriculture, a few thousand. The industrial era, 200 years. That of information, a few dozen. Now, a new one has begun. The infinite productivity era. In the last 300 years, work has been continuously compressed. Up to 1800, there was the concept that if you are alive, you work. At the end of the 19th century, child labor was limited. In England and Wales, for example, with compulsory education up to 10 years. On the other hand, a maximum working age limit is set. In 1881, Otto von Bismarck invents retirement for German citizens over 65 years. It was cheap. The average life in Germany was 39 years. Decades after the working week is compressed, in 1926, Henry Ford adopted five days a week for 400,000 workers. In 1948, Olivetti in Italy also reduced it by removing the Saturday and introducing maternity paid for nine months. Work time keeps squeezing. In 1936, the compulsory school in France comes to 14 years. In 1959, to 16. In 2018, some countries like Mexico, Argentina, part of the United States and others reach 18 years. During the 19th century, a principle is unconsciously applied by the states. Whenever productivity increases tenfold, working time is limited by a quarter through compulsory schooling, retirement, holidays and other tools identified by governments. Some states defend themselves from change, slowing it down. The Nobel Prize winner Milton Friedman visits an Asian shipyard in the 1960s where instead of digging machines, the workers use shovels. The motivation for this choice is the defense of work. Friedman, sarcastic, suggests using spoons. In 1960, the concept of productivity and its impact on economic processes begin to be better understood. The delivery person passing by the delivery on foot, then on horseback, then by bike, then by scooter, and then with a truck increases productivity by delivering several packages at the same time. In 900, this increase in productivity is transferred always in the same way. There is a fixed relationship between the share for the capital, one-third, and the quota for workers, two-thirds. But the increase in productivity worries economists who theorize a possible end of mass work. What would happen to the delivery man if he became useless with autonomous delivery? In 1964, the Triple Revolution Committee, also composed of two Nobels, proposes the guaranteed minimum income made possible by the economy of abundance, in addition to new transitional measures such as training and public works. In 1975, with the beginning of digital technologies, the law of redistribution of income between capital and workers lost value. Increased productivity begins to go exclusively for the benefit of capital. The salary of the worker remains almost unchanged. At the end of the century, many works have disappeared. The human calculators, the switchboard operators, the lighters of gas lamps, the knocker-uppers, the milkmen and others are replaced by automation. On January the 2nd, 2010, the Washington Post titles that no jobs have been created in the US in the last decade. Never happened before. In 2012, factories adopt programmable arms like Baxter Robot, retailers automate warehouses, Amazon buys Kiva systems using disks that move shelves and products. Orders leave the warehouse in 15 minutes and not 60 anymore, saving 40% on costs. Productivity becomes the competitive goal. In the 15 years between 1998 and 2013, the hours of work of the Americans remain unchanged, but the value produced increases by 42%, equal to plus $3,500 billion. In 2018, Autonomous trucks travel on motorways in Great Britain. The robot bartenders, who work without pay nor stops, replace the bartenders who strike in Las Vegas. Even more esteemed professions like doctors feel the pressure. Between 5 and 20% of the diagnoses are inaccurate, and artificial intelligence objects such as Watson are used to remedy. If at the beginning of the 19th century, 23% of life was spent working, in 2018, the average working time in the world is around 13%, and in the OSCE countries, even less than 9%. The futurist Martin Ford analyzes the problem of customers without money. Compare the market to a lake. When a company sells products, it fishes. When it pays the workers, it throws fish into the lake. The more automation is increased, the less fish there will be in the lake. 
Between 2020 and 2030, countries that are focused on low labor costs are the first to go into crisis for mass unemployment. Companies in the OSCE countries enforce a reshoring policy on mass, bringing production back to the country of origin. The complete automation of production allows to reduce transport costs and duties. The largest corporate value becomes access to customers, no longer to labor. Some professions disappear as the courier, the radiologist, the notary. Technology made them obsolete. The new professions are for specialists, only for a few. Half of the jobs that existed 10 years earlier have been automated. As in the 60s, farmers who moved en masse to the cities, allowing the fields to be cultivated with machines. With the difference that today, there are no new factory jobs waiting for them. Competition pushes on the accelerator of automation. Companies could no longer afford to compete with smart companies, companies without human personnel. Not so much for prices as for quality of service and product. When Amazon exceeds 2 million revenue per employee in 2025, Walmart, that has a revenue of only $300,000 per employee, must make the biggest internal revolution ever made to survive by automating all of its services. All of a sudden, the entire retail sector that represented 10% of workers is downsized. Fast food restaurants become gourmet places. Momentum machines, which creates machines to 100% automate the production of fresh meat burgers, puts out of the market McDonald's that employed almost 2 million people. Cura, the chain of Japanese restaurants that as early as 2018 was completely automated, brings smart sushi to the world. Like the cashiers, the people at fast foods, even the workers behind a steering wheel that in the US were almost 8 million before the 20s, in 2035, they have to relocate. The tractors are driven by themselves. The fruit collection is managed by Agribot. Cars by law in all OSCE countries must be self-driving to avoid accidents. The warehouse workers disappear. The industrial perception robots select the objects to be taken in the trucks. Kiva's robot disks store them in the warehouses and package them for customers in a fifth of the human's time. The banking workers, since they were labeled as living abacuses by the head of Deutsche Bank in 2017, no longer exist only 10 years later. The banks live on blockchain and the banking workers have become crypto consultants to help the elderly to interface with the new technology. In the 1940s, the hyper-concentration of capital in the hands of a few multinational companies creates a global social imbalance. It does not bring benefits to workers who are no longer part of the production process, but pushes customers to claim a part of redistribution of this value. For this reason, all fiscal policies and redistribution of this income are redefined. The works left in 2054 are those where customers prefer the human touch athletes, craftsmen, professional nurses for the elderly, and lovers. The job today is to take care of others. What at the beginning of the century we called volunteering. The people who earn the most are those who can better interact with artificial intelligence and with other people. The concept of office created in 1700 with the West India Company disappears after 350 years. People no longer have the obligation to join in company spaces to work. Compulsory training lasts a lifetime with the Learning Monday, introduced in the Netherlands in 2027. On Monday, you can choose which module to study and be checked by an artificial intelligence by the following Monday. The tax system all over the world has now acquired the principle of unconditional basic income financed by the use of citizens' infrastructures. Physical and digital networks and personal identities are owned by citizens who have developed self-sovereignty. Fully automated companies are taxed according to their use and rewarded for hiring people. Consumption taxes are used to redistribute income to the weaker classes within a community or state. Man has entered the new era of imagination.